Howdy folks, welcome back to Doing Brew. Today we're gonna to be installing a new exterior door. This is the uh, side door to our house. And this again is on the list of projects that I've never tried to tackle before. Uh, but it's not that hard to do. It's as simple as removing the old door, cleaning things up a little bit, sliding the new door into place, making sure it's square and plumb and true, and then securing it. We'll also be installing a new doorknob with a matching deadbolt lock. Uh, which has a combination pad on the outside so you don't have to remember your key all the time. And we'll follow this video up with a new video of how to do a craftsman style surround very similar to other surrounds I've done here around the house as part of our kitchen remodel project. Please ignore the unfinished floor. Still got to finish that but as you can see the old door which is a little over 60 years old really needs to be replaced. So it's time to get rid of this old door, put in a new door that's really going to help us keep the cold out in the winter and the cool in in the summer. So let's get to it folks. The first thing we have to do is remove the hinge pins. This is a little easier said than done. I don't know how many times these things have been painted over and I never will understand why people paint over hinges. It just doesn't make any sense. My little pry bar was a little too flexible so I had to switch to a screwdriver which gave me a little bit more rigid shaft to knock that hinge pin out. I finally got it. Look how bent that thing is. How in the world did that happen? Now I'm removing the last of the three hinge pins and the door now will just rotate on the hinges and drop right off. I was really surprised how heavy this door was. An old solid wood door from 60 years ago. They really built things to last back then. And removing the hardware on the door jamb, the strike plates, and also Removing the old exterior storm door frame. That was pretty easy to do after removing a couple of screws. Okay, now I'm using a reciprocating saw to cut all of the nails between the finish jam and the uh, stud jam. And by cutting those nails off ahead of time, it makes for easy work of just removing the old finish jam piece by piece. Just pops right off there. All right, so now that I got the jam removed, there's a bead of caulking. I don't know how many years old that is that I have to Take a sharp uh, utility knife and scratch that off. I'm using my 3-in-1 tool here, which made for pretty quick work of it. Now just uh, doing a general cleanup. Want to make sure all that sawdust and wood chips and things are cleaned up so it doesn't interfere with getting the door seated properly. And you also don't want all that old wood just laying around in the cracks and things. That tends to draw insects. And while I've got the door jam opened up, I'm spraying in a little bit of expanding foam insulation just to fill any air gaps. Please be careful though folks, this stuff does expand with some force and can uh, move your bricks or siding and make a lot of troubles for you. Next I'm going to install an exterior adhesive all the way around the door jamb just to provide as tight a seal as I possibly can. And then we just simply uh, rotate the door into place. Strong back Aiden is helping me out here. This is definitely a two person job at this point and he's going to go back in and help me uh, level this thing and get it nice and true and square from the inside. It takes just a little bit of patience but eventually get it to slide in there nice tight fit and I'm pretty lucky uh, the width of a 2x4 uh, is the exact distance I need uh, from the front of the door jam to the front of the brick facing. And now I'm going to use a drill with a tapering bit uh, installed to pre-drill all my holes. And I'm going to put uh, just a couple screws in on the left and right side of the bottom of the door uh, before I start uh, working to level it out and making sure it's nice and uh, plumb.
Okay, and taking out my level, putting it on the door on the interior side of the jam. It looks like the top needs to uh, go out just a tiny bit to get it level. So I'm going to tap up at the top. I've got a nice snug fit, so a couple of taps and it'll stay there. Give it another check with the level. A little more tap. Okay, and that looks nice and plumb. Let's go ahead and shim that into place. Make sure we've got an equal gap and a square door jam all the way around. And then we'll pre-drill and install a screw to secure the top left corner. Okay, and then you want to repeat this process all the way around the door jam. Pre-drilling with a countersunk hole putting your screw in with shims, and continually checking around the door jam to make sure you remain plumb and square. As you secure the door, it's probably a good idea to open and close the door after you've secured each screw, at least for the, the novice, just to ensure that you haven't um, tightened the screw too much and kind of throwing the door jam out of whack so it doesn't shut properly. I did it um, after I put in each screw and uh, I was able to ensure that the door jam was staying nice and true. Okay. A couple more screws up the, uh, the hinge side of the door jam and we're about done securing this one. Okay, now we've got the door secure and that is a nice tight fit. And we're going to confirm that we have a consistent size gap all the way down the closure side of the door, ensuring that we're true and plumb. And we decided to go with the Schlage doorknob and matching Schlage deadbolt with the keypad. And this is a brush nickel finish to match all the other hardware in the house. And the first step we have to do is install the latch. And Schlage has got a pretty slick uh, system here where it can accommodate two different door uh, knob depths. We're going to go with the shorter configuration. And it simply installs into the latch hole or the deadbolt. And then we want to install the exterior faceplate with the keypad attached to it. It is a little bit tricky feeding those wires through and getting all the pins to line up. But with just a little bit of patience, you can make it happen. And next we install the base plate, which is really what holds the exterior plate to the door. And we feed that comm wire in through the hole, again lining up the pins and getting the base plate in place. And then using the two screws that Schlage provides, tighten that down. Now I just tighten it down just enough to hold it in place. And then as you'll see here in a moment, we'll tighten it down permanently once we're assured everything is lined up just right. So I'm using the window frame as my reference point. Looks like I've got a pretty consistent uh, gap there and I'm going to go ahead and tighten it down. Next thing we got to do is install the battery. And then the only electrical connection you have to make is the little plug that connects the keypad kind of to the brains of the system and to the power source. And then putting on the rear faceplate, the interior faceplate. Pretty simple. You line up the pin coming through the latch, put in two screws, tighten them down. And the next thing we have to do is simply install the screws to secure the latch and latch plate 
to the door. Now, what I always do in these situations is I'll ease the screw in with my drill, but I'm real worried about stripping them out with a powerful drill. So I'll ease them in and then I'll tighten them by hand with my screwdriver. After a quick ops check, looks like the deadbolt works as advertised. Now there's one final piece of the installation of the deadbolt, and that's installing the strike plate. The pre-milled mortises on my new door jam weren't quite big enough to accommodate the strike plate. So quickly uh, trace it out and then clean it up with a sharp chisel. Or you can do it with a pretty dull chisel, which is what mine was. <laughs> But it worked out okay. You just got to remove that uh, little bit of wood material until your strike plate fits in there nice and snugly. And once it does, I'm going to go ahead and screw the screws into the door jam using my drill. And again, I will uh, finish them out with a, the screwdriver. And then Schlage provides a finished plate on top of the more uh, strong and herky strike plate uh, that prevents somebody from breaking your door jam out. All right, looks like our new deadbolt works just fine. Nice tight lock. Next, we're going to go ahead and install the doorknob. And since we're using a Schlage product before, the instructions are nearly identical. We'll go ahead and install the latch and latch plate. Then the exterior knob. And to ensure proper orientation of your exterior knob, make sure your keyhole is on the bottom portion of the knob. Slide the pins through the latch. Install the interior knob. And I've always found it difficult uh, working the screwdriver around the doorknob, really without scratching it up. So I'll get those screws about as far in with my fingers and then tighten it up with the screwdriver. And the strike plate that's included with the package fits perfect this time into the pre-milled mortise and we'll go ahead and secure that with the screws provided and it works pretty nice okay the last step in our project today is to program the keypad and Schlage provides a really easy to follow guide for doing this okay the first thing you have to do is enter the programming code and then we're gonna wait for three lights and three beeps and then press the Schlage button then press the number one three lights three beeps and then enter your personal code wait for three lights three beeps enter the same code one more time and you get a green light for success and with that, we are done with our keypad and doorknob installation. So that's all there is to it. A few simple step-by-step -step instructions, a little bit of sweat equity, and we got a brand new door with an ice lock and deadbolt. Thanks for sticking with me through this project, folks. Really hope you enjoyed the video. It was a lot of fun to make for you. It was great to install this door. If you tackle this project, best of luck to you. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. I'm happy to help you out any way I can. And please take a moment to like and subscribe. There's a, a lot of videos that I've already posted and a lot more to come. I look forward to seeing you back here on Doom Brew, folks.